Hey everyone, Tesla stock has sort of been defying the laws of physics lately, so why would today be any different? I'm gonna talk about the equity raise, Kathy Wood made some comments. I also bought some stock today and I'll show you why I did a little analysis. No trading advice, but uh, just my personal move. And I'm also going to go over some comments that Tesla Q made and let's get right into it. So first of all, Kathy Wood came out this morning, basically right after the announcement and said that ARK Invest had included $15 billion of equity dilution in their five-year forecast for Tesla. And she talks about how they wouldn't be surprised if Elon announces plans for another gigafactory in China, which would be a vote of confidence in the resilience of that country. And she goes on to talk about how the capital raise increases ARK's confidence that Tesla will gain market share in the EV market. So the first thing I wanted to do after this news was go see what Tesla Q is up to. They're saying that the total dilution in the last year is 6.7% with much of that coming via two capital raises. And then they say for shareholders unfamiliar with corporate finance, this isn't good. Um, yeah, okay. Well, <clears throat> we'll cover that in a second. And so here are some of the raises that Tesla has done over the last number of years, going back to 2016. I'm going to cover all these in a model in a second and also show you why I bought a little bit today. For the people wondering whether or not this conflicts with Elon's comments on the conference call, on the Q4 call, they did get this question. Why not raise capital now and substantially accelerate the growth in production, i.e. build the gigafactories, investment in supercharger and customer service. So that was a question posed to Elon. And he basically said, we're spending money as quickly as we can. And if there is a sensible way to spend money, then we're spending it. But as lots of other people have been pointing out, the stock was at a different price then. I think some headlines are showing and other companies have made announcements that maybe China is being a little bit more impacted by the coronavirus. I think there's some people who don't understand that there is no law against uh, a stock going appreciating 100 points and you now selling where you wouldn't have down below 100. He didn't do anything wrong. If anything, he did what you want. Again, if you've been watching, you know that probably my biggest thing about Tesla is that Elon is so wildly misrepresented in the press and I have full faith and trust in him. And so let's just go to the model real quick. So a lot of numbers on the page, but here's, I think, what's important. So here are the last three common stock raises that the company did. They'll usually announce an amount and then they'll do a fully exercised amount, which is usually a bit more. And so the three raises prior to this one in February of 2020, if I'm doing my math right, is just over $3 billion. And those raises were done at anywhere between $215 and $262 per share. So obviously the shareholders who bought into those uh, raises have done pretty well if you look at today's stock price. And then I just took a look at how did the stock perform? And this is part of the reason why I said Tesla stock sort of defies physics a little bit. Uh, and it's why I bought a little bit today. Sometimes companies will trade down on an equity offering because of the dilution. But Tesla, basically the last three raises over a three day period uh, is up between 1.6 and 9%. And again, you should do your own analysis, check your own numbers, but this is just how I looked at things. And there is one outlier, which is that the raise that they did in May of 2019 had a one month price change of negative 23 and a half percent. And that was last year when the company was going through you know, all of that FUD. And, and so anyway, it, that's still a relevant data point. You know, the stock did go down there. And by my calculation, this raise is only about 1.6% dilutive, about 3 million shares on 187 million. And for the people that are curious, they had about $8 billion of net debt in Q3, which went down to $7.15 billion of net debt in Q4. So in other words, their cash went up a little bit. And, um, and their debt stayed pretty much the same, so their net debt came down. And then pro forma for this raise, uh, their net debt, if things are accurate, will go down to about 4.9 billion. So a few other interesting things. Um, first of all, you know Tesla is operating under the watchful eye of the SEC, just like any publicly traded company would be. And my guess is that there is a lot of additional scrutiny on the company because of what they went through over the past year. And so, to anybody sort of saying, you know, the company should have announced this on their call, or you know, they should have disclosed something earlier. Well, in my opinion, a company really can't do an equity offering heading into a quarterly result because the quarterly result represents 
represents material non-public information that the company is sitting on. You can't get into a situation where you're selling stock to the public without giving them sort of everything that you know at that time about the company's financials. So number one, I think it does make sense to do it after the quarter. And as far as, you know, why they didn't announce it during the quarter or on the quarter, I don't think they've ever done that before, uh, number one. But also the stock was at $581, even if they sold it yesterday's closing price of around 767 and the stock's at 800 now. They made themselves an extra $558 million by not selling 3 million shares at the Q4 price of 581. Hopefully that makes sense. The point is they're selling at a higher price. It's less dilutive. And here's what they could potentially do with that money. So if you assume that $2.3 billion would get them one gigafactory and they sell 150,000 cars annually at that gigafactory, which I think is low, uh, 45,000 ASP, then basically assuming a 10% margin and 15% tax, you could get an additional $3 of EPS and the stock could potentially increase $45. So this is why I bought a little bit of the stock today, but obviously you don't know this is a forward-looking statement. It's a forecast. I really have no idea. And I would be curious to hear in the comments what people think they're gonna do with the money. I did take a look at Tesla Investor Club on Reddit, like I always try to do, and there were lots of different ideas about things like a Cybertruck factory, uh, Gigafactories, other places uh, around the world, and there's ARC's philosophy or thesis that maybe they'll open another Gigafactory in China. Tesla says sell, sell, sell. You don't want to own this stock. You don't want to lease it. Heck, you, don't even, you shouldn't even rent the darn thing. So that's really it. And if you want to go and take a look at their previous equity raises, you can just go to the SEC website and type in, uh, it's the 424B5 is the form that Tesla fills out. And so you can see here, this one's from May of 2016. It tells you that they raised $2 billion at 2.15 per share. Uh, here's the one from March of 2017, and they raised 350 million at 262 a share. And here's the one from May 2019. You get it. Uh, also, if you look in the 10K, the most recently filed 10K, it will tell you and list all of the different times that Elon has bought the stock as opposed to selling it because he has sold it in the past um, for things like paying taxes on exercising his options and other things like that. But if you've seen my other videos, you know that the company is forced by law or mandated by law to pay him minimum wage, but he doesn't accept that money from the company. He keeps it in the company's treasury and he pays personally the income taxes on that minimum wage salary. 100% of his compensation going forward is entirely in stock and he has to hit huge operational not only operational milestones but also market capitalization milestones in order to unlock his performance package and so check out my other videos on that topic but the point is is i think he's very but the point it but the point is i think elon continues to be very incentivized and aligned with shareholders and thank you for watching. If you have any questions or comments, I'd love to hear about what you think about this equity raise. Uh, these things aren't always a positive, and I know people have questions. I certainly had questions when I first saw the news about, well, hey, they just said that they weren't going to do this. Why are they doing it now? And after I've sort of had the time to process it a little bit and think more clearly about what's going on, uh, I understand it and uh, we'll see what happens. So no trading advice as always. It's better to look at the long term and uh, you shouldn't listen to me because I don't know what I'm talking about and all of that stuff. But in any event, I hope you have a great day and thanks as always for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you soon. Bye. You had that third failure in a row. Did you think I need to pack this in? Never. Why not? I don't ever give up. I mean, I'd have to be dead or completely incapacitated. Eight weeks later, Musk bet the company on another flight. We have liftoff. And this time around, everything worked. Perfect. If that fourth launch hadn't worked, that would have been it. Um, we would have not had the resources to mount a fifth.